Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and if you are new here or it's been a while since I've seen you, I am a now former photographer turned user experience and search engine optimizationer. The change from photographer to digital transformation stuff is an entirely different video full of maybe practical advice and pivoting, but again, a different video. For today's video, I want to discuss and compare two client management systems that I am constantly getting update emails about, Pixie Set and CloudSpot. You may be saying right now, but Brittany, those two businesses aren't client management systems. Those are client galleries that you reviewed a bajillion years ago. Well, that's where you're wrong, little Johnny. Pixie Set and CloudSpot offer client management services, with Pixie Set calling their system Studio Manager and CloudSpot choosing CloudSpot Studio as the name of their system. Both of these companies are still photographer centric, so if you have a different type of business, you'd want to look for a more general client management system because these two are just going to offer you things you most likely won't need or not enough of what you need. Both Pixie Set and CloudSpot systems are newer to the scene. Pixie Set has been talking about their studio manager since 2021, with a lot of expansion happening in 2023. And CloudSpot introduced their CloudSpot studio to the public in August of 2023. So they're both pretty fresh, and with that freshness, there can be a lot to discover. Maybe some growing pains, but always something good to talk about. So my formal question is, how do these two niche studio managers compare to each other? And hopefully we can get an answer to that question by the end of this video. I'll be looking and comparing Pixie Set and CloudSpot through a handful of different categories. My forever first category, pricing. Then we'll be looking at the user interface and design. Next will be the ease of creating and sharing different types of forms and invoices. And then finally, the overall client workflow where we'll look at the system through the client's eyes. By the end of this video, we should have a better understanding of what each system does well, what they could improve on, and what they might fail at. Fail is probably a bit harsh to say. I do not think either of these systems are going to fail. Both Pixie Set and CloudSpot are well lived in companies, regardless of how new this feature is, but no one is immune to a flop. So I guess we'll see. As always, this video is based on my personal experiences with these systems, with categories that I have created on my own. What I'm presenting and saying is all my own opinion. My ideas and categories for judgment may not match what you would have done, and that is totally fine. I encourage everyone to always do their own investigating before making their final decision about applications, systems, and services. With all of my videos, I want to be informative and practical for those that may be seeking real thoughts on these systems. And if you use one of these systems, kindly tell me about your experience in the comments below. I love connecting and chatting about these systems, so I'd love to chat more about them. Now let's jump into the comparisons with the first category, the dollar section, aka pricing. How much will this cost is the question that I am always asking when I come across a new system or tool for my business. I classify myself as generally cost conscious with my business expenses, especially now as I move away from photography as my business and into a new venture. It's important for me to not just be aware of the pricing, but also of the stuff I'm going to get with that pricing. Let's first look at Pixie Set, whose pricing is always interesting because there are so many different tiers. We'll first focus on the studio manager list. Their studio manager has an always free option that allows you to test the manager and get an understanding of what it can do for you and your clients without the worry of a daily trial countdown. Within that free tier, you do get unlimited invoices and document templates, but you do only get three contracts and one active booking type. So if you decide to start using this for real clients, you'll probably need to upgrade quickly. The next tier up is $12 per month billed annually, and with that you get some unlimited options, as well as the ability to have your branding and different reminders. 
going up another tier to $18 per month billed annually gets you a couple of extras like the ability to collect retainers on booking, remove the pixie set branding, and a couple of other things. I do find the $18 tier to be a touch pricey given that Pixie Set is currently still building out the studio manager. While I enjoy and respect the fact that someone could get the studio manager as a standalone system for $12 to $18, that's a little high given what is currently included. If I'm going to invest in a standalone client manager, I'd look at HoneyBook, Dubsado, 17 Hats, etc. Those standalone CRMs offer more in their starter tiers with a very competitive price tag, but Pixie Set might have a reason for pricing the studio manager on its own so high, and I do have a hypothesis on why. Remember how I said Pixie Set's pricing is interesting a few minutes ago? We're coming back to that. Since Pixie Set does offer all of their apps like the client gallery, studio manager, and website services with individual pricing, you can sort of build your own suite. But then Pixie Set also provides their own set of full suite tiers that all include the studio manager in order to have an all-in-one workflow. The pricing for the full suite tiers is $28, $38, and $55 billed annually, with that $38 tier being the highlighted popular option. If it's not a conscious goal, it has to be a subconscious goal for them to get photographers investing in the full suite. So they make their top tier studio manager offering a bit yikes in cost and description so that the full suite looks welcoming and more cost effective. Let's do some very basic price deconstruction of that popular $38 tier. If all of the included apps, studio manager, client gallery, store, mobile gallery, and website are weighted equally in cost, each app would break down to costing $7.60. Now each app isn't going to be weighted the same because each app is going to have different development needs, focuses, and you, the photographer, will probably assign different values based on your needs. But this is my hypothesis and we're playing internet science right now. I'll have more to say when wrapping up this category, but right now we are moving on to CloudSpot. Their pricing tiers all include the CloudSpot Studio, and there are four tiers for their pricing. They have an always free tier, which is great for us because much like Pixie Set, we can research to our heart's content without worrying about a daily clock ticking down. Within that free tier, you also get unlimited invoices and three contracts, but you also get clear information on processing fee percentage and deposit information. The next tier up is $12, and basically at this point, everything with the CloudSpot Studio is unlimited and the processing fee percentage and the bank deposit days decrease. Since the tiers all include CloudSpot's client gallery, selecting the correct tier is going to be dependent on how much photo storage your business requires. CloudSpot indicates that their most popular tier is the $24 tier, which for the CloudSpot Studio isn't going to include anything extra from the $12 tier. So again, if you're interested in the CloudSpot Studio, you'll have to weigh it against using their client gallery services and all of their other inclusions. Doing the same breakdown that I did of Pixie Set on CloudSpot's $24 tier, if we look at what is included on CloudSpot, Studio Manager, Client Gallery, Store, Mobile Gallery, we get a breakdown of $6. But again, remember, you're not getting a website when you sign up for CloudSpot, like you are with Pixie Set. To wrap up this first category, I think it's pretty clear that CloudSpot is the cost-effective option of the two with the clearest breakdown of the features included. I have no idea how well Pixie Set's Studio Manager is doing as a standalone product or within the full suite, but I think with some curation and cleaning of their pricing page, they could boost awareness and signups. How their pricing page is now is overwhelming and a bit confusing. It feels like they are trying to please every situation and sometimes that just is not possible. I respect and understand why they do it like this, but I just think there might be a better way of delivering the information. So after pricing, the second thing I always think about when shopping for a new system, is it attractive? Which brings us to the next category, pretty pixels, user interface and design. Visuals matter. 
If you look at a website that is cluttered, has no clear organization, and the fonts are so ridiculous you can't read anything, you feel frustrated, and you're more likely to abandon that site and service altogether. Looking at the overall design and the interfaces of Pixie Set and CloudSpot Studio Managers is something that is necessary in my mind. They've both gone through some extensive changes and additions over the last year to expand and grow their individual managers, and it only makes sense that we all be critical of it. Let's first look at Pixie Set Studio Manager interface. The overall interface is consistent with the other Pixie Set elements, which is very simple. By being simple with no over the top reinventing the wheel design elements, they create a timeless interface that won't require any major updates as web trends change over time. This really allows Pixie Set system to remain accessible to all types of clients, new, old, returning, they all will be able to jump into the product with ease and start playing around. That user confidence is a big boost for any brand, and it usually starts with the design. So I'm giving a round of applause to Pixie Set for their future proofing. Looking at the elements on the page, there's a great introduction to what the photographer needs to do in order to get started right on the Studio Manager dashboard. It helps keep the workflow moving quickly so that no one element is completely bogging us down. There's a lot of organizing, not just on the opening studio manager dashboard, but also the sidebar that promotes a flow that is clear and makes total sense. There is a space for everything you need and it all feels genuinely thought out. When working on setting your branding for your invoices and contracts, the setting section is fairly sparse. There's really not much to set. If you have a free account, the only settings you can worry about are the colors, some banner visuals, and you get a choice between a sans serif and a serif font. It makes the setting of brand elements quick and pretty straightforward. On the accessibility front, because of their simple branding, Pixie Set does a fine job in terms of being accessible for people with visual impairments or low vision. When setting your branding, you can visually see the changes being made and how Pixie Set makes adjustments to font colors in order to keep certain elements visible so that your client that may be low vision doesn't have to struggle with legibility. On the back end, there are some concerns with the size of the font and the color that they chose for their subtext. This gray does pose some issues in terms of contrast, and the font size for some of the subtext is smaller than recommended. I'd hope they be easy corrections, but I'm not in charge of their code, so I don't know. One final note is their mobile interface, which they currently do not have for the studio manager. I don't know if that will be corrected as time goes on, but they do have a mobile interface for their main dashboard and the other applications that they offer. So I feel like they'll be releasing a mobile interface for the studio manager soon-ish. And if they don't, I'd be curious as to why. Overall, the design elements of Pixie Set's interface are great. I like that there's not much to meander through or get confused by. You log in, you set your stuff, you send your stuff, you get your money. There's really no messing around. I do recommend doing any work that you have to do within the studio manager on a computer while Pixie Set is hopefully getting their mobile interface ready to roll out. Speaking of rolling, let's roll on over to CloudSpot's manager interface. CloudSpot and Pixie Set share some similarities in their studio manager design. And I'm not saying that in a bad or an exposing sort of way. It's just a reality that when your site is focused on minimalism, it can inadvertently look related to other sites. It's not anything egregious like similar logos. It's mainly their accent color that is sort of in the same tealish family. So in a simplistically designed interface, an accent color that is two shades from another one, can end up sharing a vibe. The things that I complimented Pixie Set for are the same exact things I'm going to compliment CloudSpot on. Their system is easy to hop into and to start playing with. The dashboard is easy to view and the sidebar is really nicely organized and divided so that I can keep my workflow intact. CloudSpot's dashboard does differ slightly in a couple of ways. For starters, there's a great visual pull toward the helper blocks lining the top of the dashboard. The call to action buttons on CloudSpot stand out more than the helper block CTAs that were present on Pixie Set. 
There's also no easy access create section like there is in Pixie Set. A little from the future update. I noticed when I logged back into my CloudSpot account to get some extra footage while editing this video that the get started section had changed to feature quick actions that boast productivity and fast creation of materials. I appreciate that after the system recognizes that you've made a project, gotten your client set up, and sent off your first set of documents, that you may not need the guides front and center anymore. So it adapts your dashboard to your experience level and adjusts to keep things clean and easy to view. Just a cool little thing that I had to mention and show my appreciation for. Anyway, back to the video. Branding is really easy to set up, and again, there's a similar design vibe to Pixie Set, but you have some more options on CloudSpot with your branding. There's a selection of fonts to choose from, you can upload your favicon even in the free tier, and you can set your contract signature, which is just hilarious to try and do on a laptop trackpad. Like, good luck with whatever I just made. On the branding page is where I found some accessibility eh moments. One is that there isn't a clear way to know where to go in order to change the look of the business name titling that's present at the top of the contracts and invoices. It wasn't until I went back to the main area outside of the CloudSpot manager, went into account settings, and then selected gallery branding that I found the spot to upload my logo which I wasn't sure if that would change anything with the studio manager, but it did end up changing the titling. I think to make this clearer is to make the account settings accessible from not just the gallery section, but also the CloudSpot manager. Another way to help make it clear would be to rename the gallery branding to just branding. And the other eh I had was that there wasn't a warning when I made my contract and invoice buttons a similar color to the button text. It'd be great if there was some sort of automatic warning or if they just did away with allowing the text color of the button to be set and instead automatically swapped the text color depending on the shade of the button. Where CloudSpot does a great job is with mobile responsiveness. They do have a simple mobile interface that makes it possible for users to be able to send contracts and invoices while waiting to pick up their potbelly order. Not an ad, I'm just really hungry and thinking about sandwiches. The mobile site of CloudSpot Studio is exactly how mobile versions should be. Exactly like the desktop site, but mobile friendly. The dashboard has all of the same information and access to the sidebar. Just tap the hamburger menu at the top of the screen and you have full access to everything you need. To wrap up this category, Pixie Set and CloudSpot are both very similar to each other, which would make me want to declare a tie, but then I think about the aspects where they weren't similar and I still want to declare a tie. In the areas where they differed, they both fell short in some way with CloudSpot and their accessibility and branding clarity and Pixie Set's mobile version of the studio manager. So they tie for this category. I love a good tie. It just feels so wholesome and nice, which I'm sure we won't be feeling with the next category. Easy Street, invoice and contract creation. So the pricing can be right, the UI can be beautiful, but if the creation process of the contracts and invoices is aggravating, it's going to impact your enjoyment of the service and could make you not want to use the product at all. Both systems definitely want you to enjoy their service. It be a little weird if they wanted you to hate it and both definitely have their similarities as well as individual quirks to their systems that I'm excited to walk through and discuss. First up is Pixie Set, who takes the simplicity of their design and applies it to the simplicity of contract and invoice creation. To get comfortable with everything, Pixie Set does have a test client for you to play around with. I'm not going to be using the test client because I want to get an idea of the whole cycle, which includes the client side of things. So I'm going to be making my own client. And if there are any X-Files fans watching, justice for Queequeg. Now that we have Scully all ready to go, we'll first look at contract creation because that little dude is going to be our most complex item. So let's get it handled right away. Pixie Set has a good amount of templates available in case you don't have a contract already or you're not really a fan of your current one. 
If you're looking to use a Pixie Set contract template, you'll most likely need to add or remove certain terms or informational fields. And Pixie Set lets you know right in their disclaimer that you should consult with a lawyer before sending their templated items out, which I wholeheartedly agree with. It may seem like an obvious thing to mention, but hey, repetition of at least this sort of disclaimer never hurt anyone. I already have an established contract that I've been using for years that has all of the things I need covered, covered. So I'm going to start with a blank contract and show the full process of setting that up. Copying from my contract to this blank page formats really nicely. It even carries over some of my headers and bolded elements. So I don't have to worry too much about stylizing. There's obviously still some things to do, but not much. I can just copy, paste, and move on. The contract input fields are what I take a tiny bit of an issue with, and that issue deals with visual cues. It's not very clear that the insert field text in the top toolbar is a button and usable resource. It blends with the other formatting options, and it also looks like a label for the variables dropdown. At first, I wasn't sure how to put in a blank field, so I was scrolling around and then noticed my cursor would change from the arrow to the hand to indicate that I could click on the insert field. It'd be helpful if there was some other visual indicator other than the mouse pointer changing to bring attention to this item, because as it is, it gets a bit lost. Since this insert field element is not a typical item that we would see on a toolbar of this fashion, it's unfamiliar and easy to miss, so making it stand out will help users get the hang of the contract creating tool much faster. Adding a simple outline that really makes it clear that this is a button could do wonders. Other than that, organizing and getting your contract template set up is very simple. There's not a whole lot to worry about. You add in the fields that you need, you fill in any fields that need to be filled in by you, and then you are ready to send off to your client to get them to fill in any fields that they need to fill in. There's really not a whole lot of styling available. You can highlight, bold, italics, underline, and strike through as you see fit but there's no picking fonts or changing font color or highlight. It's all very straightforward and keeps it simple, which with a contract, simple is best. Now let's get into CloudSpot's contract creation. Since CloudSpot is much newer, I do expect them to build out a little bit more, provide some community pre-made templates, upgrade their input fields, work out any kinks that will probably be apparent with any new feature that's released. And trust me, we're going to be talking about those things individually. First things first, there's a few email templates that CloudSpot has already developed for use, but there are no pre-made templates for contracts, invoices, or questionnaires. I understand if they don't want to be legally responsible for providing generated contracts, and it's certainly not a huge deal, especially if you have an established contract. It's just interesting that they don't have any samples outside of various emails. Anyway, we'll set up a template contract that we can save for the future, and CloudSpot setup sort of reminds me of Google Forms with the ability to add sections, but it does feel cleaner than Google Forms. I know I just said this, but I wish I had a sample CloudSpot contract to look at and walk through because I'm facing some choice paralysis in the way I want everything set up. I could dump my whole contract in just one of these sections, or I could create a section for each part of my contract. There is probably no wrong answer, but they put these sectionable parts in here for a reason, so I want to see how they intended them to be used. I know on the dashboard that CloudSpot has some helpful links to different guides, but seeing a sample contract without having to go through any informational hula hoops would just give me personally a lot of great insight. Hula hoops? Is that right? Let's do a combination kind of creation. I'm going to copy and paste the informational bits of my contract into one section, then make another section for the terms and conditions, and then another section for pricing. CloudSpot does have smart fields for their contracts that will autofill with the information from what you put in for your client's contact, as well as any information that you've entered in for the project. I will fill in all the other information before sending this contract to the client. Now that all of the information is there, I'm going to just stylize some stuff really quickly, making certain things bold and changing some headings. 
There's not much to stylize because it's a legal document and it doesn't need to have a pretty fun or be bursting with colors. I appreciate that CloudSpot gives enough design freedom without making you feel overwhelmed. Creating a contract on CloudSpot is easy. There's not a lot of steps, but with the ability to create sections, there's a bit more clicking that has to happen. So there might be some more time involved in crafting your contract templates. Also, because of the sections, I'd love if there was a way to preview the template. I want to see how the section titles translate to the contract because I want to know if my headings in the text areas are going to be redundant before saving it, applying it to a client, and then previewing it in the client area. Also, if you don't hit save, there is no warning before you leave the area for setting up your template. So just be aware to always hit save. The invoice creation for both of these studio managers is real easy and very quick. For Pixie Set, it's very Stripe-like. So if you're familiar with that system, you'll be able to jump right into Pixie Set's invoicing with minimal learning needed. I really enjoy the fact that you can set up payment schedules within the template. So if you have a standard payment schedule already that you repeat for every client, the template can include that and really save you time. On CloudSpot, the system is incredibly compact. You can start creating a template and be finished with the template in about a minute, especially if you're a speedy typer. The compact feel means that there's not much to the invoice template setup. This is where Pixie Set and CloudSpot really pull away from each other because CloudSpot doesn't include a general payment schedule when templating. You can set up a schedule before sending the invoice to your client, which we'll see more in a bit. Again, CloudSpot is the youngest system, so I'm not sure what features they'll add in the future, but for right now, they have an incredibly quick invoice template that doesn't have any distractions or many settings at all. So taking the contract and the invoice creation into account, I really like the direction that CloudSpot is going, and I definitely see the care they are putting into this new feature. But... I prefer the Pixie Set template creation process. Personally, I felt immediately comfortable when seeing the invoice setup because I am familiar with Stripe. So even though CloudSpot's invoice templating is quick, I just felt at home on Pixie Set's platform. Is that dramatic? Probably. But it's the best way to convey how my brain felt when working through the invoice creation. Also, while I had some grievances with Pixie Set's contract setup toolbar, it again just felt easy to jump into and get the hang of. I like that the view of it is a single document instead of the sections that CloudSpot has. I wasn't questioning how the information would be laid out in the final design at all like I was with the CloudSpot sections. And while CloudSpot was still easy, I feel like I wanted a little bit more from the system. I think more will definitely be coming because the system is so new and CloudSpot is excellent with updates. And I'm also really excited to see how both keep growing and expanding. But if I had to choose one to use right this very minute, I would choose to use Pixie Set. Whew, okay. That was an incredibly beefy category, but we are now coming down the road toward the finish line with our last category, workflowing. The full client experience is something I wanted to show off for these two systems because what we see on the back end as the professional isn't going to be what our client sees and experiences. Even if we did previews, there's still some of the pipeline that we're missing. So while I'm going to go through the sending workflow, I also want to showcase the client view as well. Oops. Over on Pixie Set, we have our client, Dr. Dana Scully, and we are going to assign our contract and invoice templates to her by clicking the little plus button next to the documents heading in her client area. We'll start with the invoice, and with our template, all we have to do is set the final due date, which then fills in the dates for our payment schedule. After that, we're all ready to send, which we can do right from Pixie Set with a simple message. We can also send via link. So if you have a client lounge or you just really like sending messages directly from your email client, you have the ability to do that with a direct link. I'm just going to share it right from Pixie Set because there's no reason for it to be special from my end. Scully, of course, deserves the world, but spoiler, this isn't actually going to Dana Scully. It's going to my own email. 
I wish that when I finished sending the invoice, it would take me back to the client area, but it is just two clicks away, so not a big deal. Next up, I'm going to add the contract template that we created and just fill in the items that need my attention before sending off. Those autofill fields have already grabbed our client's name and her email, making it just a little easier for Scully when she's ready to fill out all the info on her contract. After everything is set, we are ready for Dr. Scully to sign. Again, I could use Pixie Set to send the message or get a direct link to add to a client lounge or an email, but we're going with Pixie Set's messenger because it's easier for our purposes. So now with those items sent, we are now going to move over to Dana Scully's inbox because I think she has some email to open. We'll start with her invoice email. We can see it's a very nice and simple layout with a little bit of the branding color that we set on the back end. It's easy to get the why of the email, mainly because we didn't mess with the message much. It's a very quick read, which with an invoice message doesn't need to be bulky. It's finished off with a call to action to view invoice, again branded nicely, and keeps Scully in the know of where we need her to go next. When clicking on the view invoice button, Scully sees a nice greeting that lets her know what her next payment is and when it is due. Side note, I really like this background that we chose for our invoice. It's really pretty and the colors are cool and I love that it is dark enough for the white text to stand out. Anyway, we chose well, which in combination with Scully's big old glasses should be easy to see. And if she scrolls down a little bit, she'll be able to view the description of the services she's getting, the total price and the payment schedule that is set for her. I'm of course not walking through paying this invoice, so let's hop back to Scully's email and look at her contract. The email for the contract is similar to the invoice, which makes sense. Being consistent is one of the things that makes a user's experience with your business top tier. Scully's going to click the review contract CTA and be taken to the contract. Again, the page is similar to the invoice with a nice greeting, theming, and a nice big CTA. Now I'm not quite sure if this CTA needs to be here. It feels a bit repetitive and confusing. Scully isn't really sure what will happen if she clicks this button because the last time she clicked the review contract CTA in her email, she was taken to a different page. So where will this go? She's skeptical, as is tradition. When Scully does eventually click on the review contract button, it turns out it's an anchor button that jumps down the same page to center the contract. But I feel like if that CTA was removed, the contract would be even further above the fold and there wouldn't be a need for an anchor. Anyway, Scully starts working on filling in any needed information, which is very nicely flagged in the contract. And as she moves through, the flags are removed. When she's ready to sign, she'll click the signature box and she can either choose to draw her signature or it can be typed in. I love seeing that she has these two options because oftentimes the draw signature method is a complete menace to society. With the contract signed, Scully's part is all completed and I can see on my backend photographer dashboard that I need to countersign, bringing the workflow full circle. The workflow on Pixie Set is pretty quick to move through, both on the back end and on the client's end. You could have your contract and invoice delivered to their email within 10 minutes. Now that we've taken a gander at Pixie Set, let's head on down to CloudSpotville, where we have Scully all set up in our client tab. The dashboard for the client area on CloudSpot is well organized. My eye is drawn to certain aspects like these colorful spaces that are specific for monetary tracking per client. There's no real distractions anywhere else in the client area. The informational elements are well laid out. I'm curious about the activity field. Obviously, I don't have anything in this area right now, so it's not populating. I think personally, I would prefer the activity field to not be so large or to not be above current projects. To add a new project, invoice, and contract within the dashboard, you'll have to come up to the quick action drop down. We're going to create a new project, just a simple portrait session, and we'll add our contract to this area by clicking the plus add contract in the aptly named contract area. Selecting start with template, 
selecting our template that we created earlier and filling in any information that we feel like we need to fill in. Also, just as a note, CloudSpot doesn't have any sort of input fields that the user can do or that the photographer can even enter into once the contract is sent. So just keep that in mind when you're creating contracts that you need to have all of the information ready to go right from contract setup for that client. Hopefully in the future, they allow for input fields to be entered into the contract so that clients can fill them out, but at the moment, they're not there. When the contract is ready, you'd think we click the send button, right? Wrong. Why? Well, you'll see in a little bit. So next up is the invoice, which we can add in the client area in a similar way that we added the contract. There are different routes that you can take when adding a contract to a client, but we're just doing the one that is the easiest and makes the most sense for us. In the invoice preview, we can then add our payment schedule and due dates for this client. Once all of that is set, we again are going to avoid the send button because CloudSpot provides project-based client lounges, which collects the invoices and contracts created as well as questionnaires, but we aren't looking at the questionnaire aspect today, into one access area. It's a nice gathering spot for the items and you can send one message directly to the client right from CloudSpot. To send the client lounge to Scully, we're going to click on the send project button at the top right of the screen. From there, we'll be able to make adjustments and see a preview of the message that will be going to Scully. We'll hit send and at that point, we are just waiting for Scully to complete her documents. So let's pop on over to Scully Vision and check out all the goodies we sent. Within Scully's email message about her documents, we can see the email is identical to how the preview was and that the look is pretty similar to the look of Pixie Set's email. A lot of these systems use the same providers for things like mailing. It's just easier to outsource things like this rather than having to build your own method. I mean, in my previous face-off, we saw one client gallery powering a rival system, so similar emails aren't a big deal. Anyway, Scully has no idea that these two emails are identical because this is an alternative reality where we never sent her the other ones, so we're gonna stop making assumptions here. Within the email, Scully can see the View Project CTA nice and large, so she is going to go ahead and click on that and be taken to a client area where she can see links for her contract and invoice. It's really cool that there are visuals and also text alerts letting Scully know that her signature is needed and that she has an invoice due. Side note for me, I am in love with this client lounge setup aspect from CloudSpot. I think it is genius and I want to see it everywhere. <laughs> I just think it's so cool. Anyway, back to Scully. She's first going to sign the contract, so she's going to click the CTA and look over everything. Again, we have a very similar look to the Pixie Set contract, even down to the anchor button that will take Scully all the way to the bottom of the page. I think this use of the anchor button makes a bit more sense. It takes the client directly to the bottom of the page where they can sign. So if there's nothing for them to fill in, then it is a very quick button push and go. Although I really don't want to be promoting people to not read contracts. So I'm just going to take back everything I just said and say I don't like the implementation of this button here either. One thing I didn't quite realize, and I don't know why I didn't realize it, is that there are no fields available for Scully to fill in. This is a little bit of a flashback for previous Brittany making that note for future Brittany, but future Brittany really didn't even um, consider it. So yeah, I uh, don't know why I didn't realize that. So there's a lot of unintentional and unfillable areas on this contract that is completely my bad. And I look forward to when CloudSpot puts in the ability to have client fillable fields, because usually there's some information I want from the client, like who's going to be included in the session. It's easier for me to get that information right in the contract because I can just copy and paste all the information from date, location, and who will be there right into my calendar notes. 
Anyway, we'll pretend those blank fields aren't there and move on down to the signature area where Scully's only option is to draw her signature, which is Squiggles. After signing, Scully will go back to the client area where she will see the alert for the contract is now gone. She could still access the contract if she scrolls down a bit though. The only other item on Scully's list is the invoice, which she can see she needs to pay the first half of right at the top of her client lounge. She'll click on the pay invoice call to action and be taken to the main invoice page. There's a nice big pay now button for Scully to click and if she wants to be reminded of what she gets with her session before she clicks pay now, she can easily scroll on down to view the rest of the invoice. The invoice page is simple and gets right to the point and Scully will not be paying because Scully is me and I'm not going to send money to myself. Let's hop on back to the photographer side of things and see how the project area looks now with the updated signed contract. Before, there was an alert about the client needing to sign, and now that has been updated to let us know that the contract is fully signed. We can also see the activity with this project, which is pretty cool. If you have a client that you've been waiting on for a while and you're not sure if they got your email or if they're just ghosting you, you can look at this activity log and see if they have been to their client area and viewed any documents. It's pretty clutch, especially for someone like me who is always worried about my emails going to spam. Again, another honkin' big category, but I am glad we got to experience this whole ecosystem of photographer sending and client reviewing. It's not enough just to know how these systems look for us on the back end. We have to make sure that they are also functional and clear for our clients. For this category, I'm divided again. First things first, I love CloudSpot Studio Client Lounge capability. When I think of dedicated client areas, a few words that come to my mind are high-end, beneficial, and smooth. It's an element that I think clients will really appreciate and just be wowed by. Then on the pixie set hand, I really love the fact that there are fields I can add to the contract that are fillable by my client. And when the client views their contract, they can see the fill here little flag. They can also type their name in the signature box rather than draw. And I love having those two options available. With those things from the client's experience in mind, Pixie Set feels like the system that I could just quickly hop onto, copy and paste the contract I have now, and not have to worry about adding extra steps to my workflow or sacrificing the informational fields in my contract. I know this kind of like harkens back to the previous category, but those things are just so important. And while I love the client lounge aspect, I want to see more from CloudSpot and I am very hopeful and looking forward to seeing more from CloudSpot because they are moving in such a fantastic direction. I guess with all of that being said and asking myself the question, would I make significant changes to my contract in order to have the convenience of the CloudSpot Studio client lounge? I have to say no. I like the workflow that I have created for myself and for my clients over the years. And while the client lounge would be great, Pixie Sets user experience within the contract has me hooked. So because of that, Pixie Set slides ahead and wins the category. To wrap up everything about these two studio managers, both Pixie Set and CloudSpot have created systems that are incredibly useful and beneficial for photographers. I think they are setting a standard for client gallery providers, and I think, not sure, but I think we're going to see a lot more client gallery services incorporating contracts and invoices and questionnaires really becoming an all-inclusive kind of system in the future. By focusing on photographers, which CloudSpot and Pixie Set should find natural at this point, they are able to cut out a lot of bloat that the larger client relationship managers have to include in their applications in order to be approachable by all. 
There are great things about both experiences and I feel like both systems could have what the other has and still be unique and attract their own ideal clientele. I mean, for the most part, their messaging systems, document presentation, application, and the basic infrastructure of their studio managers are pretty identical, but they still have their own flavor and their own identity that it's not going to get mistaken for the other. I am eager to see where Pixie Set and CloudSpot go with these studio managers. I'm curious if they have plans to expand and what those expansions might look like. I could see a mobile interface for Pixie Set and I could see CloudSpot Studio refining their document creation even further. So what are your thoughts? Are you happy to hear about client galleries becoming more all in one or would you prefer they stick to just gallery resources? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, the opinions shared in this video are just that, opinions. If you are intrigued by these systems, I encourage you to try them out for yourself before investing or writing any of them off. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you liked this video and will consider subscribing to my channel for more deep dives and discussions of all things photography related. If there is anything that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to check them out. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.